Megan Hicks of I Run Far. I'm with Tim Tollefson. It's a couple days before the 2022 Western States Endurance Run. You are back. We are back. Hi, Tim. Hello. Good <laughs> to see you? you. Good to see you, too. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything else to say about no, how you We could wrap up the interview there. <laughs> That's been good. Next question. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, things are things are really good. Uh, I I remember actually being here a year ago with Brian, and we had a conversation, and I feel like I was saying a lot of the things that maybe I'll say right now, but this time, a year later, with more experience under my belt, just personally with, you know, with stuff, I actually am believing the things I'm saying, which I think <laughs> is an important step, like, forward in anyone's journey. I think that's a really good place to start this interview because I think from the outside looking in, it looked like you had a pretty good race last year, like had some struggles, but in the end finished strong. But I think as we've learned by you sharing a bit more this year, it was a very different experience from the inside out. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I, I would, I would have thought maybe, maybe I'm in my eighth year of ultra running that that would have been enough experience to employ wisdom in the moment, but it didn't happen last year. And, and yeah, I, I mean, things objectively, maybe on the outside, fifth place, 1655 isn't terrible. Although also it's probably one of my worst performances in my career. Um, but what really was hard or heartbreaking for me is I, I basically just like, I went in, really thinking I was going to have a perfect day. And I think that was like initially setting myself up for potential struggles where we know that it's not possible. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, I, a lot of us might visualize those perfect days and, and I felt like I was ready, but because I was so hard set on that, the moment I started encountering problems, I didn't troubleshoot them the way I've done in other ultras. It was more just like, Oh, it's not going perfect. And then I started like catastrophizing my day before it even happened. Mm -hmm. So like by the time I got to Cal Street, I had quit like mentally. Like I really legitimately wanted to drop out and had my crew been there or there was an exit on Cal 2, like I, I would have taken it. Okay. Like, I mean, it was, it was just like, to me, there was no point fighting anymore, which is embarrassing to say, but that's where I was. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, I didn't have the option. You know, the, Joanne, the medical director there, you know, sat with me, cried with me. And, Aww. you know, basically just was like, she could tell I was just in a bad mental space. Like, and then sure enough, after I started eating and drinking again, I was able to fight. And I am proud that I fought hard the last three and a half, four hours. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I ended on a good note. But it was, it was just something I'm not proud of because... And I think probably one of the biggest things is I had a opportunity to run states and I squandered it. And a lot of people won't get this opportunity. And it really, I think, as I reflect on that, that's what like hurt the most was that like, I was just taking the day for granted and, and I shouldn't do that. Like, we don't always get another try. I think you've already kind of answered my next question, but Should it's... I interview myself? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just hold the mic, go for it. <laughs> no, but... um. What have you taken forward from that experience last year? Like, because I think there's some metaphors for life and there's also lessons for ultra running in there. What What's going to be in your pocket because last year happened? I think that probably the biggest thing I've learned in this, like it started to bleed over from just like personal therapy into running is being kind to myself. Mm. Like, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly imperfect. We all are like, and you, you try to like, maybe, or you have these dreams of things going, you know, one way. And when it doesn't happen, roll with it. And I mean, we know that's ultra running, but sometimes you forget it in the moment. Um, and so I think like just being kind to myself, granting myself grace when I, you know, fumble or stumble or mess up and, and know that I don't need to give up on that moment. Mm -hmm. Like I, there's, sometimes I feel like it's almost like, you know, you drop your phone that doesn't mean you then have to smash the screen. <laughs> it's like, it's not all or nothing. Yeah. And I sometimes do that. It's like, oh, things are starting to go poorly. Let's just double down on how poor it can get. And let's find rock bottom. And it's like, you're real shitty. <laughs> let's, and they're like, you know, it's like, why? Like, you don't have to do it. Like, we all work too hard to, to give up. Um, but I, I was talking to some close friends um, the other day. And, and uh, something I struggle with is vulnerability. Like, letting people in 
in my life, and I think that's probably true for a lot of people, it's just uncomfortable to actually like get below surface level. Mm -hmm. And but what I've learned is that like the ultimate act of like self care or self love or acceptance would be like letting those around that want to help in, let them help, mm -hmm. lean on them for support, you know. And I feel like if I'm out there on Saturday, if I can just practice that, like that, if like the ultimate self care would be to nourish my body and let others help me along the course, like, cause I can't do it alone. And, and I think that's, that's really what I'm seeking is like proving what can be done when I let other people in mm. and, and yeah, maybe that is, well, no, it is true for life. You know, like sure. let's, let's, uh, let others support us, um, and connect. But so, yeah, it's, um, I think that's probably what I, is probably the, the biggest thing that I learned is like, don't give up on yourself, you know, and you know, those lows are going to be low, but there's always something on the other side. You just have to give yourself a chance to see where it might take you. Mm. So I love that. Yeah. It's um and I think the sky is agreeing with you right now with these rumbles of thunder. Mother Nature's like, yeah, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh I mean, th that's another lesson I think just like bring up nature, like I don't know, you know, nature is so imperfect <laughs> and we love it for its imperfections. Mm but we don't grant that same grace to ourselves. It's like you beat yourself up or knock the shit out of yourself or, you know, things that you like, you, you don't like. And it's like, but then why can we grant everything else all that, you know, that grace? Um, and, uh, and also I think w using the nature analogy, like everything's impermanent. Mm. Like it doesn't last forever. Your lows aren't going to last forever at States. Like it's going to be super low. It's going to be dark <laughs> out there but it's going to pass. Like it, you just, and, and I, I started in training appreciating like how precious that moment is mm -hmm. and to not, not necessarily want it to be over because you'll never get that moment back. And it might be a hard moment, but there's something in that moment that's worth experiencing. You're there for some sort of reason. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, I, I think that's what makes it so special. Mm -hmm. um, recognizing how you'll never have that same opportunity again. Yeah. I think one of the things I'm learning from this interview so far is that uh, I am ha will have no idea what's actually in your head when I see you out on the course on Saturday. You could be like way into existential wonderland or you could just be floating on a cloud. Um, yeah. yeah, that will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, sometimes you don't want to know what's in my head, I'm sure. But that's true for everyone. But uh, yeah, I you know, and, and actually, I, again, I was talking to Lindsay um, that in the last even couple months, I've had moments where the noise in my head is so quiet mm. and it's been pretty liberating. Mm. And I, I think I, that just tells me that I'm on the right path. Like I've been more present for this block than I have in any in my career. And I know it's like, you know, kind of I don't know, cheesy to say, but honestly, it feels like because of that, like I've already won this cycle. Hmm. Like I'm chasing some audacious goals out there, but I don't need them to happen anymore because like the last several months were so enjoyable. Like, and I can't hmm. honestly say that at any other point. Like I needed the result to do something for me. Uh -huh. And then I was so worried about getting injured or sick that like, if I couldn't be there, it was all wasted. And when you're living that far in the future, you can't enjoy the present. And I think that's something that I I just am continuing to you know work on because I know it's not it's not going to be perfect, <laughs> but it's it's something worth trying for. I love it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your training a little bit. Uh, for those of us who get to follow you on Strava, it really has looked near perfect. There have been no blips. It's just been yeah, like great quality quantity for months. I guess if I had a talent, it would be consistency. Like I'm not much of anything Isn't that else. Isn't like 90% of ultra running? I know, right? And you know, like, I don't have a lot else going for me, but I, I'm, I'm damn consistent. And I mean, I, I owe that to, you know, some, some, a bit of an addictive personality, okay. but um, yeah, training, mm -hmm. it's been good. Um, I opened the year with a block for way too cool. And my coach, Mario and I, intentionally backed off everything less volume less mm. workouts less intensity and we focused on just my head 
and giving me myself energy and time to do what I know is the crux of my career. And I went into that race not confident physically, but was able to kind of scrape the bottom of the well mentally. And it was like, oh, we're on to something. Like, I less is more for me at this huh. point in my career. Huh. Um, I wonder if that's because in part it's something different from what you've been doing. I, I think so. Oh. And and then also, I, I mean, I, I just need to make friends with my own head. <laughs> so I think that's been a big thing. And so this block, what's actually been fun is for the last month, I, I signed off of all social medias. Oh, wow. And huh. I mean, challenge anyone to do that. It's yeah. amazing. Huh. It's uh, Life is so much better. Um, I'm sure maybe sponsors will eventually drop me, but it's, all right, I, I know there's balance to be had there, but for me, I needed to. Um, and so I don't know what's going on in the running world, which has been really refreshing. Yeah, that's fun. Um, and, but it's allowed me to prioritize what's important and that's the people around me, my own running, um, and not getting caught up in all that noise. So like with the, the workouts though, yeah, it's, it's gone really well. Um, you know, we've just prioritized quality and, and, you know, for me, nutrition has been a crux. Um, I've had a really hard relationship with food and, but I've been able to focus my training around getting stuff in and it's gone really well. And not surprisingly, I feel better on runs. I recover quicker. Um, so it's kind of like, ah, I guess you know, all these nutritionists and coaches knew what they were talking about. Um, nutrients work. <laughs> they do. Um, but it, it's, I, I I just told someone, um, like, I, I'm coming in feeling like I wish I'd done more, hmm. which for 100 is probably where you want to be. Yeah. Like, not cooked. I didn't have any hero workouts. I had some good ones. And probably mile for mile, it was on par with my best ever season of 2017 before UTMB. Hmm. Um, but unlike that year, I am a better, I'm in a better mental space. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. You know, maybe I've had some corner pieces of the puzzle in place for a few years and now I'm starting to fill in like the center and I feel like I'm getting closer to like being able to see, you know, what that masterpiece looks like. That really complicated floral yeah. arrangement on the table that you just can't figure out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe that's, you know, we'll never fully figure it out, but <laughs> it'd be nice to get a little more clarity. Well, your hair is looking pretty good for the race I as well. Haircut. I didn't get one yet. Um, <laughs> But I'm wearing a hat, so oh, okay. no one's going to see it. Well, we're yeah. seeing it now. <laughs> well, it sounds like things are things are in a really good place in terms of like there's stored potential energy here just waiting to be unleashed in kind of the right ways on Saturday. I think that's a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I, I'm just, I guess if I think of ultra races, this is one of the few in the world that leaves me curious. Mm. Like UTMB and some other, I mean, obviously I haven't run a lot of races, but my curiosity lies with this race still because I know I was so far off what I'm capable out there. And mm. last year when I finally stopped having my pity party and decided to keep going, you know, you I, got rolling. I, I was able to roll the last yeah. 15 miles. And, and it's kind of like, I know better. Like if I just not like, quit for four hours in the middle, I, I think my day would have been a little bit different. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited for another opportunity. And like I said, I'm, I, I don't want to take it for granted. Um, you know, I, I sat through the lottery last year and uh, in person for this race and I was tearing up because, you know, you see how hard people, mm. not how hard, how long people have been waiting for that opportunity to get on the start line. Mm. And as elites, I think we, you know, and, and I, I do think it's okay like that you earn your spot on course through qualifying um at an elite level but i think we it's easy for us to feel like oh if it doesn't go well i'll just do it next year because we can right. like which again it's not unfair necessarily but i think sometimes you maybe lose sight of how special it is to be mm -hmm. out here um and and i don't want to stand with you on sunday and <laughs> say well maybe there's next year <laughs> so i but uh i know and Lindsay keeps reminding me every time you go out hard in a race <laughs> you blow up. I'm like, well, that's not always true, but I know what she's saying. It's like, and States is of course you need to take care of yourself early. And so that's the plan. I, I, my mantra has been be a leaf in a stream. Mm. I'm just going to, you know, flow with the terrain. Some points I'll be going quicker. 
might get caught in some terrain traps and spiral a little bit, but like, you know, it works Eventually through it. You'll keep, you'll keep going. going. <laughs> you just make sure that you don't get out of the stream. <laughs> no sitting in the chair. Oh my God. For more than two minutes. And I told Three my, minutes, I, maybe. <laughs> I told my crew to, you know, I want some tough love. Um, and also something I've never done in my career is I'm having a pacer. So oh. that, I mean, and, and actually t like debriefing after last year, had I had a pacer, Joanne would have let me out of the aid station like half hour earlier, mm. but she just didn't want me to walk down the trail solo. Yeah. I was like, Tim, you're an idiot. Why didn't you just have a pacer? Like you could have run half hour, like right there, half hour faster. Mm -hmm. Like I could have just walked down the trail. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm look, I'm, I'm both scared to have a pacer, but excited because I know it, it's going to help. It will help. Yeah. I think you're in a good place and I wish you the best of luck in being the leaf in the stream. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But there's uphill at this race, so it's not entirely. Anyway. It doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> okay, okay. Best of luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that.